Hi everybody uh, and welcome to On Air with Owen once again and today I am joined by the fabulous Shabri Lakhani who's the CEO of, uh, of SalesWorks. Shabri, thank you for joining us today. How are things? Yeah, really good. Thank you for having me Owen. I'm really looking forward to this. Pleasure. Pleasure. Really excited to have you on and you're talk talking about a topic that's close to my heart, close to your heart obviously, so really excited about, um, about the topic we're talking, talking about today which is all focused on SDR leadership um, and, but we'll get into that in a minute but but before we get into the topic, can you just give us a two minutes? Who's Shabri and who are SalesWorks? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I started my career about 12 years ago uh, as an SDR, which looked very different back then than it does today. Um, I did that role for about 18 months and then I moved into an SDR leadership role. Um, I started as a team lead, progressed into a manager, head of, um, spent three years doing that for um the team in Europe and Americas at Finastra, and then also spent three years in Middle East and Africa doing that for that region and Asia Pacific. So in total, I grew the team from three to 50. Um, and what I loved doing was building the process structure, the strategy. Um, and so after just under eight years there, I left Finastra and set up SalesWorks in 2018. Um, with the sole purpose of helping companies build and optimize their SDR teams. So we do that through consulting and we do that through training. Um, so we've been doing that for about just under three years now, um, working with startups and scale-ups, um, depending on where they are with their SDR team, really helping them maximize and, and creating that perfect sales environment. Brilliant. Really good segue. And so let's start with the question which is the topic we're talking about. Why is SDR leadership so important right now? I, I love this topic and I'm gonna try and keep my answer concise because I can talk about this for hours. Um, it, to me, this comes down to the fact that the SDR role and team is so important, right? And it's what that team needs to succeed and it's what that team needs for high performance. So if you've got someone that is living and breathing the day-to-day -day success of that team, that's, that's where the SDR leader role comes in. Because to me, if you don't have your machine firing at the top of the funnel, that impacts your entire sales process and your entire sales funnel. So having someone who can get that team to where it needs to be, in my opinion, is key. It's interesting because you and I have talked about this kind of topic at a number of shared events. And there's an observation, I think you've adhered to this in the past, there's loads of content for SDRs. And there's loads yeah. of content for strategic sales leaders, VPs of sales, founders who want to grow a sales team. But there's this missing gap in the middle. Is that fair? Totally fair. I, I would say um, the SDR role has probably grown significantly in the UK in the last three to four years, right? Which is one of the reasons why I set up SalesWorks because I, I saw a gap in the market. I think that that growth has come down to a couple of things. I think first, SaaS organizations have specialized their revenue roles more. So you've got your AEs, your SDRs, your um, customer success teams. I think people are spending a lot more on focused demand generation efforts, not relying on inbound, not relying on outbound and needing a team to actually focus on this. So, what, so what's happened with that growth of the SDR role is that companies are hiring and building these SDR teams and suddenly they get to three, four, five, six reps and they think, okay, well, we need a leader now. So I probably get asked three or four times a week, do you know any good SDR managers? Do you know any good SDR leaders? And what I'm seeing is, I think there's a bit of a supply and demand issue right now, which is, and I'm sure we'll cover this, but you know, there are not enough good SDR managers out there who've got that proven track record where companies are looking for five years experience, but the growth of the individual contributors is, is requiring that role. So it's a really interesting imbalance that, that we see there. So I think that we don't have that dedicated enablement community and resources which is why I'm so keen to, um, to start putting that out there so companies have got that to lean on. Let's just set out the, set out the basics for a moment, because I think there's a really interesting point there that if there's only 200, I'll use a number that's, that's round as easy, 200 good, experienced SDR managers out there in London, let's say, and there are 
500 tech firms who need one. It doesn't fit, right? So, you know, we've got yeah. a problem. I think those might not be the right numbers, but that's my sense that it, it you know, it, it's relative to that at least. Let's just start with the basics though. What does a good SDR manager need to be responsible for in an organization? Because I think we can assume that we all know that, but actually it will be different in different organizations. Completely agree. So we use the 4S framework, which we believe are the four components needed for a high performing sales team. So you've got skills, structure, strategy, and systems. So I'll unpack each of those because that, that to me comes under the, the responsibilities. So skills, you've got hiring, onboarding, career path, and training and development. On the structure side, you've got KPI structure, team structure, day-to-day -day structure. Um, and then on strategy, you've got things like cadences, right? Strategy, um, account-based messaging, um, campaign methodology, persona messaging, all of that sort of stuff. And then systems is the tech stack that supports the team. So that's not just do you have a sales loft or an outreach? It's actually how is your how is your team geared up to be as productive and efficient as possible? So everything from your CRM and the dashboards you use to how can the team get better and better with the help of technology? So I've mentioned a number of things there, and that's why I think this role is quite difficult because to me, an SDR manager is actually responsible for all of those things. Now they can leverage other parts of the organization. So let's take um, messaging, for example. You can, you can work with your product marketing and your marketing team on that, but you're ultimately responsible for that. So it is a very nuanced, nuanced and complex role, um, which is why I think it's really difficult to find the right person and go back to this supply demand issue that we've got. Do you know what? I think you've touched on something that I, I don't think I've ever seen it this way. When you look at a strategic VP of sales role or a CRO role, actually, in some ways, I'm going to say something might be controversial. They've always got an easier job. Yeah. You think? <laughs> I, I I think so. Um, and I'm sure there's a ton of people Even out there my who network are going to disagree with us. And yours. Yeah. Go on, say it anyway. <laughs> so I think without going down a rabbit hole that as a VP of sales, you are responsible for revenue. You might be you might be involved in funding rounds and things like that as well, but you're ultimately responsible for revenue. It's tangible. With the SDR, you are constantly trying to prove the ROI of the team. Your teams aren't directly revenue generating. Top of the funnel, I believe, is one of the hardest parts of the sales process, and I'm sure that you will agree with me on that, mm -hmm. Owen. Um, you know, I, I, th I think that, that in a way it is a lot harder because I, the other reason is that it's very unlikely that someone else in the organization has done that role and been an SDR and managed an SDR team. And I'm a big believer that a lot of people underestimate how difficult being an SDR is. Yeah. And quite often those people are the people that are sitting above an SDR manager. So <laughs> I think I read something the other day that you know, only 20 or 30 percent, I can't remember the number of VP of sales, CSOs, CROs have actually been an SDR at some point in their career. So when you oh, wow. think about that, you know, they haven't been in the trenches. They don't know what that looks and feels like. And back yeah. to your point about you started there, but several years ago, it was very different. Even if they did, chances are it's a very different job nowadays as well. So that, that, that must be really difficult for an SDR manager. You've got to communicate upwards what it's like and also manage yeah. downwards at the same time. Let's just look at those. So you talked about the four S's. I like that. Skills, structure, strategy, systems. And in amongst those, you then went into subcategories. So it's a pretty broad role. There's a lot that you've got to cover and a lot of ground you've got to be good at. So when we look at the traits of an SDR manager, if you've got to be across all of those things, what are the key things that you're, you'd be looking for if you were hiring an SDR manager or a leader? Great question. So I think that the skills that make a successful SDR so grit, resilience, emotional intelligence, I think those are the skills that make a good SDR manager because I think the management skills can be taught, right? So I think as, a, as an SDR manager, I think you've got to be a very good communicator. 
because you are typically hiring people who are straight out of education, um, not always, but often. And so I think being able to work with people who are really early on in their career and have that transparency and have that communication with them of setting expectations, communicating what they're doing well, what they need to be doing better, I think is, is, is really, really important to be able to give that honest feedback. Um, you've got to be incredibly analytical and data driven, right? Which I think is so key and something that didn't always come naturally to me when I started as an SDR leader. But, you know, looking at the data and how to use that then to adjust your strategy. So things like A-B testing with uh, messaging cadences, tracking effic efficiency ratios, all of that sort of stuff. So I think you've got to be you've got to you've got to be able to pull out data driven insights and act on them. I think stakeholder management in the SDR manager role is really key, right? So managing your relationship with your VP of sales, your chief marketing officer, your CFO, all of the different roles. So I, I think the communication piece there again plays into that, but I think also the emotional intelligence and resilience I talked about as well. And then something that, that you know, is I think is really important is being able to be part of that team and lead from the front. And I think we will say that, but what I think is really important with the SDR manager is you should be willing to pick up the phone. You should be willing to make a cold call and roll your sleeves up and, and get stuck in. On the last day of the quarter, if you know numbers are low and you know you need to lift a particular metric, I think it's really important that you lead by example and, and you're willing to do those things as well. So some those are some of the traits that I think are, are really important. Really interesting. Do you know, the more you talk, I just keep writing questions, which tells me a lot about, <laughs> about what we're talking about today. But there's two that come off of that. One is you touched on a lot of the skills that you need to be a successful SDR are the same as the skills that you need to be an SDR leader or manager. So why is it, in your opinion, that so few people are able to make that step? I think it's because companies aren't talking about this as a potential role and next step in career path and progression. So I, I was on a revenue collective webinar the other day and they talked about planning your team for three years time. Do you have the team that you need now for three years? And I love that because it, it got me thinking. So if you're hiring your first two SDRs next week, you should already be thinking about your SDR manager. If it's not an immediate hire, that's great, but you should be thinking about that as, as a next step. And so I think companies are, are, what I'm seeing is they're a little bit reactive to this. We urgently need an SDR manager. We urgently need a head of sales development. Um, so I think that, that, that that's part of it. Um, I think the other part, and this is something, actually I'd love to get your thoughts on this, is there's a lot of, team leads and there's a lot of player managers who you know are responsible for their own quota and then also managing and coaching the team i personally don't think that that works and i don't think that's effective and the reason why is because i don't think someone can do both of those roles are so important so as soon as you tell someone that you're going to be doing both of those and that in each is 50% of your time, we just can't do two things that well. Everyone, you know, everyone thinks that they can multitask probably better than they can, yeah. but you just can't do both of those things that well. And so I think companies sometimes use that as a bit of a cop out for budget, headcount reasons, whatever that might be. Um, and that dilutes the importance of the role. Yeah. Do you know, it's interesting. And I think it shows how sim simplistic we think around our sales orgs that we'd rather take on another SDR because they're quota carrying and because they'll generate revenue directly. And because I can measure it and it's tangible than an SDR yeah. manager who might get 20% out of the five people I've got in my team. The end outcome is the same now, but it builds you an infrastructure to grow to in the future. But I'm more short term thinking as an org and you know, to, to add something to that, I think what I see is that people put SDRs into SDR manager leadership roles and they do one of two things. They either make it a hybrid because they still want to get money out of them. I still want them to bring revenue in. Um, 
and that they're, they're not prepared to wear that salary and for it not to be revenue generating directly, although it is, as we know, or they don't give them the coaching and the training that they need. They assume that they can make that step by themselves because they're a good SDR. And, um, and I think actually what happens is a lot of very capable people who could be good SDR leaders and managers become poor ones because of the environment and the, and the, and the, the, the tools that they're given around them. Um, and I think, again, it comes back to organizations putting value on the role, which is what you've talked about several times already. Um, the other question I had on what you said was around internal relationships. So I believe that there is a direct linear comparison between those who are successful in their careers and those who develop di uh, strong relationships internally, inter internal stakeholder relationships. Have you ever seen anybody who's not good, got good or, or maybe he's not strong at that, but who's been hugely successful? Because I'm yet to meet anybody. And I don't think there's enough people talking about that either. I, I think you're spot on. Like off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone because I, it, the SDR role is in the middle of sales and marketing, right? I, I personally don't think it matters where they, where they sit, but, but, but regardless of where they sit, they're in the middle. So your ability to network, communicate, and work as a wider revenue team is so important. And if you can't manage those stakeholder relationships or you can't communicate the value of your team, you're ultimately going to have that as something that restricts you from, from moving forward. I think also that's a really important role because if you are planning career paths and progressions for your SDR team, you need to be networking and building relationships with other stakeholders so your team can essentially be progressing into those roles. You know, one thing is that we're seeing a lot of SDRs move into customer success roles. And I personally think that's a, you know, that's a really good career path. Mm. So what's your relationship like with the head of customer success and how are you ensuring that you're in sync really regularly to talk about what their upcoming hiring plans are, what does a good CSM look for them so you can then build that into your training. All of these things can't be done unless you have those strong internal relationships. But I fully agree with you. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that can do one without the other. Mm. I think you can get short-term success, but I think in terms of yeah. long-term career uh, progression within an organization, it's a roadblocker every time for me. And I think, uh, again, I think, not enough weight is put on that for grads coming into the SDR space around actually your, one of your priorities should be going and building relationships with senior people in the business that, that aren't, I need something, I need help, I need, but actually a genuinely authentic relationships because one day you're going to need their help and it might not be them that needs to give you the help from a process perspective, but they might be prepared yeah. to help you because you've got that relationship. What, one of the things that I hear regularly, and I'm really interested to get your opinion, is that SDRs need so much management. And I don't know if that's an anecdotal thing, but compared to a marketing team, compared to an ops team or a finance team, SDRs are just blooming high maintenance, aren't they? Salespeople are high maintenance, full stop. Is that a misconception or is there something in that? I don't think it's a misconception, but I think you're right. But I think it's often said as a, as a negative thing. Yeah. And I don't think it is a negative thing. Okay. Um, if you think about it, the average tenure for an SDR is about 15 months. Ramp is three months. You get some people who say, you know, I fully ramp my reps in two weeks and, you know, sure. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so so you, you, your time to value is three months, which means you've got a 12 month period of your SDR. And so having that day-to-day -day management is so important because of that short time frame that they're actually in the role so you know the reason I think they do need a lot of management you know I touched on this earlier is firstly often they are straight out of education I think secondly unlike an AE SDRs are doing activity that can be and should be measured on a day-to-day -day basis Right. So it's, it's a very, um, you know, you can you can sit down with your SDR at the end of every day and talk about what happened that day with an AE. Your deal might not move forward every day. Right. So it's yeah. very different. Um, and I think also just given the fact that, you know, often it is a it's a, it's a very strategic role. 
so you know I talked about all the things at the start that I think an SDR manager should be responsible for so actually you know all of those things do need that regular management I think there's a very fine line between micromanaging but they do need that regular management and if you look at all those initiatives I talked about that's huge yeah 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 it, it, it's a highly transactional role when you think about it yeah the number of times I do something that gets a result in a day is 50 100 150 whereas if I'm a content writer I might produce a piece of content in four hours or five hours you know the, the, yeah. the time at which we have to check and balance and measure is so much more um so much more regular um and i think yeah. that, that creates the, the the mindset that we're talking about it's an interesting one i always think it's 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 interesting the way that people outside of sales talk about sales reps um versus maybe other departments i think there's definitely a a, a trend there so if it's Let's say it is higher maintenance, whatever we want to categorize it as by its very nature, rather than because salespeople are, are higher maintenance necessarily. Why did why do we, we we going back to the point before we have people that, that skip out that role and they end up reporting into the VP of sales or they end up reporting into somebody else, marketer, whatever it might be. What do you see as being the, 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 the result of that? Like what, what happens if you end up with an SDR team who don't have a dedicated SDR lead or a manager and a focal point and somebody's giving them the time and attention that they need? I think ultimately what you're left with the end result is an SDR team who's not high performing, mm. right? Um, at SalesWorks, we get companies that come to us when their SDR team isn't working, right? And I would like to like to change that and start working with companies the first time they do it. But typically, you know, we have companies that say our SDR team aren't hitting target, and you know, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same for yeah, I'm sure it's the same for you as well. But I think ultimately, what we see is lack of process, yep. lack of process adherence. So sometimes the process just doesn't exist. Sometimes yeah. it does, but it's not really being stuck yeah. to. Um, we see motivation and morale go down because they they SDRs don't often feel like they're having that training and coaching they need. Um, visibility within the organization. So I think recognition is huge. And we saw this with BDR Appreciation Week last week. Um, but recognition is huge. And so I think these are all the things that if you don't have a, day, a manager day to day, these are some of the things that I think are so important that can often get left out. Um, you know, I, I've seen organizations where they report to the CEO and the founder. Yeah. I mean, you know, that that's just not going to, not because it shouldn't, but it just doesn't make the CEO and founder's priority list, yeah. right? Um, so then you look at these expensive hires, and you look at, you know, you, you brought a team in and it didn't work out. But I think if you ask those people, did you do everything you could have done to make that work? The answer is probably no. But that's where I think that companies like that would be much better off outsourcing, right? Yeah. So, you know, the answer isn't always build an SDR team and get an SDR manager. I think it's a case by case basis. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, it, 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 we get asked that question just like you do regularly around do I do it internally do I outsource it my answer is always the same I don't know yet because we need to understand what the situation is because sometimes building in-house is absolutely the right thing to do and you think that I would say outsourcing every time is right but it's not sometimes yeah. organizations can't cope with that they can't handle that other times doing it internally is clearly the wrong thing to do if it's going to be CEO led and you know the CEOs now sort of parking them in a corner and letting them get on with it. And suddenly your four S's are getting ignored and it's just ad hoc, make it up as you go along. And we don't know what's working, what's not working. All we know is that it definitely isn't. And uh, you know, a lot of unraveling to be done. So that's that's really, really useful advice. And and when we look at some of the, the, the so you've seen people go into an SDR leader role for the first time, either come through that team or be brought in from externally. If you were doing that, so somebody listening to this is about to go in a role, just gone into a role, what are some of the quick wins you focus on? What are the first thing, your first 30 days? What are you looking at first? I'd, I'd create a vision and a mission statement. That would yeah. be my number one thing, all right? Nice. Um, and, and I'm a big fan of this. And I often ask companies, you know, what's your mission statement for your SDR team? And I'm often met with Sally Blank looks. 
Um, but your mission statement could be anything, but, but keep it clear. So your mission statement could be, you know, I want to build the best graduate program, graduate sales program and training program. Um, it could be, you know, we want to be a strategic partner to the field sales organization in terms of pipeline generation, whatever it is, but don't dilute it, keep it clear. Then I would, if you've got an existing team, I'd have a look at, do you have the right people in the right roles and what does each person need from me to be successful? Mm. I think another quick win is have a playbook. Um, so many companies don't have a playbook. Um, my advice on a playbook is keep it fluid. So don't just write it and never revisit it and say that, you know, this has got to be how it's got to be forever, but keep it fluid because interestingly, SDRs only remember 15 to 20% of what they learn in onboarding. And it's that 80 to 85% that need constant reinforcement. So having that playbook is going to help you. Um, and then lastly, I'd have metrics that incentivize. So if you're coming into a new SDR team, it's likely that you're going to have some metrics that were set a while ago. And part of that is, do these metrics make sense for my team? Are they achievable? Do they motivate my team? And ultimately, do they feed into the revenue of the business? Yeah. Um, because so many times I see people still measuring on number of calls and, and activity yeah. and, you know, and, and not only that, but also having really unachievable sales qualified lead targets. Yeah. And you've got reps who just see that as this monstrous number that they can't achieve. Yeah. So those would be some of the quick wins. Um, so vision, playbook, people and metrics. You, you, when you talk, so much logic comes out and sense, it's brilliant. And I, I'm just going to take you back to your four S's for a moment again. If you look at the typical sales uh, leader or SDR leader you work with, that you're training or you're, you're involved with consulting to, out of that skill, strategy, structure and systems, what are the things that you see as being a common trend being the weakest and the strongest? So do we have most people stepping in, they can automatically do the... The, the skills piece, but they're really bad at the structure thing. Or is it, is it fairly broad across that you find a, a, a variety of weaknesses and strengths? That's a really good question. I, I would say most people neglect systems yeah. because it always comes down to budget and, you know, we want sales loft or we want chorus or whatever that might be. And you know there are there is there's no budget available for that. So systems tend to be the last one that people look at and address. The second one, I think, is training, which comes under skills. So um, either training is a fire and forget initiative, um, and so there's no ongoing maintenance of that. Um, or people say, well, you know, we just think the SDR manager should be training the team every Monday morning in a team meeting. That is not training. Like, <laughs> that's, that's just not training, right? Why so, not? And, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, so I think that those would be the, the two areas that I see. And I think the, the other one is strategy, yep. right? Um, and the KPIs and the strategy piece. And, you know, I think often people have the opinion, if you make more calls, if you double the amount of calls that you do a day, you'll double your results. That's not, that's not the case, right? So I think that if you wanted to double your revenue, don't double your headcount. So I think it's looking at this role in a, in a more strategic way, but I would say there's a misconception about metrics and output that I mm. often see, which, which is a strategy piece. Do you know what? There's something I talk about quite a lot that I think fits really nicely with what you're talking about there, which is that I think most leaders focus on the what, but not the how or the why. So what we do is we make loads of calls, we send loads of emails, we follow that sequence, we use that tech stack, but whatever it is, we, that our tech stack looks like this, we use sales off. But why do you use that? And how do you use yeah. that? It's going those extra steps, isn't it, to, to actually challenge it and find improvements. And I think you know, that, that touches really nicely on the, on the point you're making there. You, you touched on something earlier that I'm interested to, to just dig in on a little bit, if you don't mind, which is around you don't you don't have a 
strong feeling around SEO I should report to sales or marketing. Can you just 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 delve in on that for a minute? What, why do you feel feel that way about it? I think part of the reason why I feel strongly about that is because I think it's far more important to have an SDR manager. Mm. Right? I've seen SDR teams report into sales ops, sales yeah. enablement, marketing, sales. And, and I, I don't think that's the factor that makes that successful. I think we're also moving, what I'm seeing is we're moving more to revenue teams. So moving away from chief sales officer to chief revenue officer, right? And we're talking about heads of growth as opposed to heads of sales. So I think that as we then look at revenue as a more integrated function, it's less about sales or marketing and it's more about one. So, you know, ideally you'd have a chief revenue officer and then you'd have an SDR manager who reports into that. Um, so I actually think, you know, when I was an SDR leader, like my peers were our VP of marketing and our VP of sales, mm -hmm. which was great because actually you're then setting that as a, as a, that's your level playing field, right? And I think that's far more important. So I think the respect that the SDR manager role has the, is much more important than the place they sit in, in an org yeah, chart. Yeah. Can I throw something in the mix? I'd be keen to get your opinion on. I think it's also driven by the way in which you sell and where your, 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 what your sales yeah. process looks like. So if you're a very inbound driven organization, then being more marketing led at the top is, is probably quite healthy. If you are outbound and outbound only, then having a leader that's prepared to get in the trenches, pick up the phone next to you, all that kind of stuff that we talked yeah. about earlier, probably is more likely to be better suited to the sales role. Do you, do you, do you, do you agree with that? Do you have a different opinion? I, no, I, I fully agree with that. I think if that's the case, it's really important that the other team has got a visibility and awareness of what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Because otherwise you will then just still be this siloed organisation that say you are 90% inbound and you sit within marketing and then you want to next year go into outbound, it's important that you then got that visibility and that route into the sales organization that's not going to, to limit you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Let, let's, we've touched on why people don't bring in SDR managers um, at certain stages. When do you think is the right stage? So you talked about hiring ahead, you know, if I'm hiring my first two, I probably want to be thinking about it. Maybe not for today, but maybe for the future. What are some of those trigger points that, that a founder should be thinking about or a VP of sales should be thinking about where they say, I'm ready in three months time so I can start the process now versus I'm ready yesterday, help, um, so that people can be better planned for hiring that role. What are those stages and trigger points? For the manager role? Yeah, so when is it right to bring that role in? I would say if you're an organization that has got an SDR team, that some of the stuff that I've talked about here, so process, strategy, um, training, if that stuff is absent in your organization, bring that person in, bring someone in who's done it before, even if you've got two reps. A lot of companies wait until they get to six to eight reps and say, well, now we're growing, we need a manager. So it's the foundations of that team that are going to make even that one or two SDR that you've got really successful. So I would say as early as you can, bring that role in. And you'll probably be thinking about this, well, I can get two SDRs for the budget of one manager. Your SDRs are going to be far more productive and successful if you've got a manager. So it's more of a long-term yeah. ROI play than a short-term yeah. play. Is it fair to say they're likely to stay longer as well? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I think you're likely to get a longer tenure. But also what it does, and we haven't touched on this enough, is if you've got an SDR manager role, that creates a progression plan in itself for your SDRs. And that's why um, a lot of SDRs leave, because they don't yeah. see that progression opportunity at all. That's really interesting. Hey, is there ever a case for hiring an SDR manager leader first? So if you know you've got money in the bank, you've just, you know, you've raised two million pounds, series A, off you go, you've got to build a sales function of five, six SDRs. Would you ever do it the reverse way and say, let's build the manager, let's get the manager in, and then they can hire the team around them rather than the other way around? 100%, 100%. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I spoke to someone this week who's in that position. They've just joined and they're hiring a team of five over the next three months. That's really important because you then get to build the culture and you get to build the team that you yeah. want. Yeah. So when I moved to Dubai, I inherited a team and it. I remember thinking at the time that it was an opportunity for me to create a new team, create structure, create processes. And I found that inheriting a team, they were, they were brilliant, but I found inheriting a team was quite difficult mm -hmm. because everyone hires differently. And so I, I would always recommend that if you are, if you know you're bringing a, a, a SDR team on board, get your manager in first, lay the foundation, create what the role should look like, and then let them hire into it. And, and when you're doing that, so let's take that scenario, right? I've just been, I've, as I say, got two million pounds, ready to grow out my sales org. org. I've been founder led sales so far and networking and organic, you know, organic opportunities. Now I want to grow this organization. Am I looking for somebody who's more uh, more skills led? Am I looking for the skills? Or am I looking for the personality? What would you do? So what, I'd hire for personality. Personality. I'd hire okay. for personality. Yeah, and because I, you... I think skill can be taught. Yeah. Okay. And what about experience as an SDR leader over the coachability and moldability? I would focus on hiring someone who's done the SDR role before. Yeah. that would be that would be my my preference okay. and then i would ensure that i am going to train them and coach them or um find someone who can train them and coach them yeah. um on what does a good sdr manager look like so what are the things that you need to you need to do but i would yeah. the coachability is key this is turning into a quick fire round which i didn't intend whatsoever <laughs> but here you go I love process, it. <laughs> process driven or people driven Oh, process driven. And if you're that founder, somebody's going to challenge you or conform? Challenge you. Yeah, 100%. Quantity or quality focused? Quality. Oh, <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> really, well, I, I've got no more. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of fun. Let's, we're going to have to wrap up shortly, but let's just look at that scenario. So let's look at the founders that have tried to do it without hiring that role, who have built teams of those six to eight SDRs and realized that it's out of control and people are churning and it's going wrong. And I'm probably feeding some of the answers here, but put a plea out. Why should I be putting weight on hiring an SDR manager when it's another salary that's double the cost on my P&L, when it's non-revenue generating, when they're gonna take control of things and take it out of my control, all that kind of stuff. Those are my, those are my fears as, an, as a founder. Put a plea out. Why should I be hiring that SDR manager a leader first or early or, or at the beginning? Why should I take that hit? I genuinely think it's because it goes back to the four S's. All of those four things that you need to be a high performing SDR team need that attention and focus. And so you can hire eight SDRs, but to be fair, you're not gonna get the most out of them unless you've got someone who's managing each of those components. And as a founder, that's not going to be yourself. So, you know, if you want to maximize the output that those six or eight reps are going to have, you're not going to be able to do that, in my opinion, as efficiently without someone there day to day. And if this role is so important, which you and I think it is, what do I as an organization or we as an organization need to give an SDR leader? in terms of environment and support in order for them to be successful? Because we can't park them out on their own and expect them to do everything, can we? I, I think the first is giving them autonomy, right? So autonomy to create processes, create strategy, create training, all of that sort of stuff. Mm. I think the second thing is budget. Right, so budget to optimize by tools, tech stack, training. Um, and then I th think the third thing is, is um, respect um, and elevating them within the organization, right? So, and I think things like, you know, being a peer to your head of marketing and things like that, I think is, is key. Um, and then I think the last thing is expectations is how if you know it's not a revenue generating role so what are the expectations 
that you want to set them of how you're going to measure success. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Because I think there will be founders out there that watch this and think, geez, it's really easy to measure, measure an SDR. How on earth do I measure the success of a, a, an SDR manager? Um, and it's scary, isn't it, when things aren't, um, you know, they're not tangible, they're not black and white in front of you, it's not simple, but you've got to yeah. interpret it and, 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 and learn to think differently. You know, we talked about SDR managers and the quick wins that they can get and the things that they should do when they start. Let's just reverse that for a second. What shouldn't they do? What are some of the mistakes you see new SDR managers go in and make early? <laughs> Where do I start? There's got to be some good um, stories in here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think some, some of it's not their fault, right? So too many reps to manager ratio. I want to manage 16 SDRs. Yeah. What's, what's, so, sweet, what's your opinion on sweet spot and number on that? Eight maximum, okay. ideally seven, max, seven. So seven. Yeah. Um, I I think it's it's focused, right? Like there there are things that I see managers do, which is, you know, we'll do group coaching sessions. It's like, well, that's good, but actually, you need a tool to do that. And the reason why I think a tool is so important, firstly, it can help you with onboarding, so you yeah. can create libraries of calls and things like that. Um, the feedback that we get, though, from SDRs is they love listening back to their own calls because that's one of the things that I see as a really important trait for, for SDRs is that continuous learning, self-improvement, yeah. and that drive to do better. So having a tool, for example, I think is really good. Um, the other thing is is automation. So not enough leaders are automating the day-to-day -day tasks of their team, and they're creating admin for their team whether it's contact research or data or crm processes make your sdr's life as easy as possible like you if think about go back to the mission statement what do you want them to be doing why does that team exist and then look at their day-to-day -day activity so i would say that's one of the, the mistakes i see sdr leaders make is just yeah. over complicating and not simplifying enough mm. You want your salespeople selling. That's exactly. It. Not doing admin. Exactly. And there isn't a salesperson out there who wants to be doing admin as well or, or, or updating CRM systems, is there? Yeah. No, I don't like doing it. I don't know about you, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not my strain. Um, Shabri, this, is, this has been genuinely brilliant. I feel like you and I could talk for another 10 hours and still be pulling um, golden nuggets out there in terms <laughs> of ideas and, and, and mistakes and things that people can learn from. Um, and you know it's been it's been fast, fantastic listening to you uh, to you on top. You're clearly passionate about it um, and helping organisations to realise the value of this role and, and this function um, within their sales org. And, and I think you're right. Not enough not enough people are, are are putting the value on it. So it sounds like we're setting up an SDR leaders charity or something, isn't it today? But, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's just about shining a light at, on it and making it important. Is there anything else that you uh, you'd like to add that maybe I haven't asked a question around or that we haven't touched on? I, th I think we've covered everything. I mean, like you said, we could probably talk for hours on this. Um, I, I think the, the only other thing I would say is um, this is something that I personally went through when I first went into a uh, manager role. I asked my company for, for training and enablement. And um, they said yes. And I tried to find some SDR leadership enablement and there was nothing there. And so I got sent on a sales manager's course that was all around, you know, forecasting and pipeline reviews, and it wasn't relevant to me. And so, you know, my, my ask of companies is to create some relevant enablement because I didn't know, for example, how to run an interview. I didn't know how to run a one-to-one. -one. And it's some of these more... Um, fundamentals of management that need reinforcing so that's that's what i would say is is create that enablement internally um or look externally for that not doing it is not an option mm, mm. And, you know and you have said something to me in the past so i'm going to set you up to say it again i'm sure but <laughs> around how one of the reasons you started salesworks is because it wasn't out there it's not there in the market that the, there's loads of content i touched at the beginning Loads of content and training for SDRs. How do you become a better SDR? How do you do better outreach? How do you get more engagement? There's loads of strategic stuff for VPs of sales and company strategy and founders. But that little role, that little slither in the middle, which is clearly very important, we've talked about, there is nothing until SalesWorks comes along, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I created the SDR Leadership Workshop uh, almost two years ago now, and we've now had 70 SDR leaders um, globally actually go through that program. And it baffles me, but yeah, very much works in, in our favour, <laughs> that we are the only company in the UK that offer SDR leadership training. And, um, and, I, and I don't mean that as a plug, um, although it, it works quite well as one. But, <laughs> <laughs> and, but you know, I, I had something on a podcast recently, um, Katrina Lake, uh, who's the CEO of Stitch Fix, she said, if you're the first person doing something, you're either the smartest person in the room or the stupidest person in the room. Now, I think, I think and I hope that I fall into the, the former bucket there. Um, but you know, no one's doing it. And so I'm really passionate about working with the, you know, the likes of yourself, self-confidence to create that community in the UK yeah. for SDR leaders. Um, so they've got that dedicated enablement to make them successful in this role. Well, if you want my opinion, I think you are in the former bucket from the, from the value <laughs> you today. Definitely not one of the stupidest people in the room, but um, I think you've, you, you're you onto something there. And hopefully, whether it's a founder watching this and they, 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 that triggers a thought around the importance of this role and the value, whether they've already got an SDR manager and they realise there's some gaps, they're not getting the support, or whether there's SDRs out there who want to move into an SDR leadership management role, hopefully they've picked something up today and learned something. I'm sure they will have. I've certainly learned from you. Um, if people want to talk to you and reach out to you, how's, how is it best that, or how do they best get in touch with you? LinkedIn. Um, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, every week I tend to post a piece of content that's sales or SDR related. So um, hopefully people will enjoy reading that as well. And then putting you on the spot, who's a great SDR manager out there that you've worked with that you know that's really the, the pinnacle of this space right now? Give somebody a shout out. I'd say Ben Smith at Reach Desk. Thank you. He started as an SDR and he's, I think, built a team of eight in about 12 months, creating processes, strategy, um, fantastic coach. And, and I think he's done a really, really good job. So if you want to learn from somebody, there's somebody else to, look, to, to, to follow and to look at. Thank you very much. It's really good. Sorry to put you on the spot there, but you, no, I knew you pulled somebody out that was good. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> Gabby, thank you so much for your for your input today. Really good to, to have you on as a guest today. Um, and, and it's been great chatting to you. You learned so, so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Aaron.